Silent Hill 2 has always been a game I've wanted to play, but I was too afraid to. Originally releasing in 2001 on the PlayStation 2, Silent Hill was worked on by a team who called themselves Team Silent over at Konami. This game built off the first game which originally came out on a previous gen console, the PlayStation 1. Being developed on a stronger console, the team had more freedom to create the vision that they truly saw. This video will be my thoughts and experiences on my first playthrough of Silent Hill 2, with my only experience previously being watching my brother play bits of it as a child at night. So, truly not a wonderful experience. So, come join me as we take a dive into the world of James Sunderland. We open up the game overlooking the lake. Just the two of us, staring at the water. Could Mary really be there? Our protagonist received a letter from his wife, who is presumed to be dead, asking him to meet her there at their special spot. In our car, we find a map of Silent Hill. And finding the only entrance to Silent Hill, we go down a path that leads into a dense, foggy forest. Now, here's where I first noticed a camera. It doesn't really show us where we're going, and we can't really see that far ahead. And we start hearing these animalistic sounds. At the end of the path is a well, and looking inside the well, we find a strange red piece of paper. The game seems to be leading us down a cemetery. Here, we meet Angela. Excuse me, I... <gasps> oh! I, I'm sorry. I... I no, was just... No, it's okay. I didn't mean to scare you. I'm kind of lost. Lost? Yeah. I'm looking for Silent Hill. Is this the right way? Um, yeah. It's hard to see with this fog, but... There's only the one road. You can't miss it. Thanks. But... Yes? I think you'd better stay away. She warns us that the town has something dangerous about it. That something is really wrong with it. Yes, I really don't care if it's dangerous or not. I'm looking for my mama. I, I mean my mother. It's been so long since I've seen her. I thought my father and brother were here, but I can't... Both the characters are looking for someone, James, his dead wife, and Angela, her family. They both seem, like, weirdly distressed, and the conversation seems awkward, and I'm not sure if that's just the game or if it's intentionally awkward. After the conversation, we finally get to move around a little bit more in the graveyard, and this is where I changed the controls. So playing on keyboard, I changed it to the best thing possible. With the land still encompassed by the fog, it made me realize that we won't really ever truly see what lies in front of us. This game has traditional tank controls. The camera isn't always in the right place, sometimes it's fixed. And just like that, we made it to Silent Hill, a ghost town. The streets and the buildings are completely empty. There's some blood on the ground. And we see a figure just waddling away. And honestly, whatever that thing is, I don't really want to head towards it, but it seems that that's the only place that we can really go. So, we arrive at an underpass with a small entrance just big enough for us to enter.
get our first taste of the combat, and man is it clunky. The movement is very stiff, and with the camera, it's not always easiest to aim. Is it dead? What the hell is it? It's not human. Oh yeah. This thing broken? What the? Regardless, this radio is going to be one of the most important things in the entire game. It lets us know when monsters are close by, and honestly, it's a game changer. And now, the main streets that were once empty are now completely flooded with these walkers. The good thing is, we can just walk by them. Exploring a little bit more, we find a trailer, and inside the trailer is a memo, letting us know to check the nearby bar. Inside of the bar is an old map that had been weathered with age. We update our own map, and after checking the wall inside, there's a note that says, There was a hole here, now it's gone. Checking the marked place on the weathered map, we find this weird cockroach-like enemy. But luckily we just have to hit it a couple times and it gets completely stunlocked. Checking the dead body, we find a key to the apartments, and so we head over there. In front of the apartments is a garbage chute, and that's pretty much it. Inside though, the only lighting is coming from the entrance, and the floor and the walls look grimy, unkept, abandoned. Getting the map, we head towards the second floor. This type of location spooks me out. The corridors are tight, the paint is peeling, the radio is going crazy, and worst of all, we need to check every single door to find where we need to go. Which means that there is no walking past these monsters. We have to fight them. Not only that, the camera doesn't show much. So you just have to brave yourself and move forward. So after a bit more exploring, we find a room with a mannequin with a flashlight on its chest. Grabbing a flashlight, a monster immediately wakes up, and I just yeet out of that room. And now here, Silent Hill throws another enemy at us. One that's four pairs of legs. In another room, is a clock. I had a feeling it could be moved. We're gonna have to be coming back here later, in order to push the clock, because at the moment it doesn't seem to be able to be pushed. So, finding nothing else on the second floor, we head to the third floor. And for some reason, the floor is barred off halfway. So, checking one of the only rooms that's available, we find a room that it's in tatters. Bullet shells litter the ground, puncture holes fill the wall. In the middle, lay a red shopping cart, carrying a pistol. Going back to the third floor entrance, there's a key on the ground. And rather than James use a stick in his inventory, he decides it's a good idea to outstretch his hand. And knowing that we're no longer alone, we set off to the second floor, we hear like a weird screaming noise. And waiting for us on the other side of the bar is a weird guy wearing dirty robes and he has a pyramid on his head. And honestly, I do not want to fight that guy, he looks scary. To the room with the clock and now in the living room, TV's turned on and somebody's sitting right in front of it. Lucky for us, 
Right next to his dead body is a key to room 202. This room is really strange. There's like butterflies floating around. Some of the room is cage. There's this really weird hole in the wall. Inside the hole, key to the clock. Now we gotta turn the hands of a clock to a specific time. And this is a puzzle, but lucky for us, I'm good at guessing. Pushing the clock, we head to the other room. It's largely empty, so we just leave the room and head to the place where Pyramid Head was. Luckily, he's not there anymore, so... We can just keep moving on to another staircase, which allows us to gain access to the rest of the third floor, the floor where the little girl was. And the third floor, like the rest of the other floors, is filled with monsters, so we head into the first room that we can. Terrified, James reaches for his pistol. After that terrifying experience, the monster leaves and we're shown a key on a dresser. Just to double check, I hit the monsters just to make sure they're dead because I don't want them coming alive later on. I freaking hate those crawlers. These little cockroach suckers. Grabbing the key from earlier, we're now able to access the fire escape. With access to the new stairwell, we check everything and find some old juice. Upon inspection, we see that it is non-edible and the pack is extremely heavy. Perhaps heavy enough to drop into the garbage chute? So, that's exactly what we do. Heading over to the garbage chute, we drop the canned juice in it, and we hear the loud clunk. Heading out in front, we check the garbage chute, and we find an old man coin. Along with the old man coin, a gossip magazine. The story reads about a man who kills two children and blames it on the voices in his head, and then commits by impaling a spoon into his neck. Safe to say that... Silent Hill has its fair share of crazy people, and I don't think James is an exception. Going out into the courtyard, we find a swimming pool. It seems to be filled with three of those weird monsters. And for some reason, there's a baby stroller in the middle of the pool, carrying a sleep pool. Not really wanting to stay around and fight all those monsters, we find an entrance to another building. Fair warning, there will be vomiting noises, so if you are eating food, feel free to skip this part. In this room, for some reason, there's a dead guy inside of the fridge. So we head into the bathroom and we find... <laughs> It wasn't me. I didn't do it. 
Do what? I didn't do anything. I, I swear. He was like this when I got here. <coughs> my, uh, my name's James. <coughs> James Sunderland. Um, Eddie. <coughs> Eddie. <coughs> Who's that dead guy in the kitchen? I didn't do it. I swear I didn't kill anybody. <coughs> You're not friends with that red <coughs> pyramid. <coughs> Red Pyramid thing? I don't know what you're talking about. Honest. But I did see some weird looking monsters. They scared the hell out of me, so I ran in here. Well, I guess this place isn't too safe either. What happened here anyway? Uh, I, I told you, I don't know. I'm not even from this town. I just. I just... You too, huh? Something just brought you here, right? Yeah, you could say that. So here we meet Eddie, someone else who can see the monsters. And for some reason, even though he's not from this town, he's here. Honestly, I was just happy to see someone else who wasn't stepping on her foot or kicking a key away from us. Unlocking the fire escape, we get this weird cutscene. Okay, so who in their right mind designs a building that has a door that leads to a window? It was at this point that these surreal experiences just made me realize that maybe none of this is real and that James is imagining all of it. Because besides the monsters, there's just so many strange things going on. Regardless, James has the bright idea to stick his hand into a god knows what filled toilet. And he does it like a champ. He doesn't even wash or wipe his hands afterwards. What a giga chad. Inside the toilet, we get a code that unlocks a safe nearby. And inside of that safe, we get a ton of ammo. Further in the building, we find an empty room with a teddy bear laying next to a white door. Inside the room, we meet a familiar face. Oh, it's you. Yeah. I'm James. Angela. Angela, okay. I don't know what you're planning, but there's always another way. Really? But you're the same as me. It's easier just to run. Besides, is what we deserve. No, I'm not like you. Are you afraid? I... I'm sorry. Angela doesn't really seem to be in the right state of my mind. It's okay. Clutching a knife and talking in such a strange, manic way. Also, she is making claims that we are similar, which is strange because she barely she's even knows us. Perhaps she knows more than she's she letting on. This apartment building? I don't know. So, all you know is she lived in this town. What did you say? How do you know that? Well, I just figured, because this is where you're looking for her. How else would I know? Yeah. Am I right? I'm so tired. So, why did you come to this town anyway? I... I'm sorry. Did... did you find the person you're looking for? Not yet. Her name's Mary. She's my wife. I... I'm sorry. It's okay. Anyway, she's dead. 
I don't know why I think she's here. She's dead? Don't worry. I'm not crazy. At least, I don't think so. Uh, I've got to find my mama. Should I go with you? This town's dangerous. Now I know what you meant back there in the cemetery. I'll be okay by myself. Besides, I'd just slow you down. What about that? Will you hold it for me? Sure. No problem. If I kept it, I'm not sure what I might do. That whole conversation was bizarre. It was like two children talking to each other, but one thing is clear, neither James nor Angela are completely sane. There's something that they're hiding. After the conversation, we receive a coin, and laying on the ground is a photo ripped in two, a woman and a little girl, and on the other half, a man. Perhaps this is the photo that made Angela so sad. In the same building, we find a note on a locked door, hinting that we should check the first floor. In the room on the first floor hinted at, there's a desk with five holes. It suggests that we use all three of the coins that we've collected so far and put them in the correct order to unlock the desk. The puzzle is very, very strange, and it honestly took me quite a while to figure it out, but essentially we put the woman in the middle, the old man to the left of her, and the serpent all the way to the right. Unlocking the desk, we get a key to the door with the note. And this room has access to the balcony, except this balcony has access to its neighbor's balcony. In the other room, we find some bullets, a key on the bed. So, we head to the stairway, which is really close by. no idea what to do this guy is a serious tank i just went i'm pumping all of my bullets into him and then after the fight i realized that i could have just ran away from him i didn't even need to fight him a siren goes off and pyramid head just starts walking away into a watery stairwell like completely submerging himself into it and as soon as he's gone the water just drains and honestly this further makes me questioning what is really happening how does water fill a stairwell and just drain like that is james clinically insane we find the little girl from earlier sitting on a wall, humming. You! It was you, wasn't it? You're the one who stepped on my hand. I don't know. Maybe I did. What's a little girl like you doing here anyway? Huh? Are you blind or something? What's that letter? None of your business. You didn't love Mary anyway. Wait! How do you know Mary's name? Somehow that little girl knows James' dead wife. Continuing down the straight path, we find our way at the park. The same park that James thinks his wife is waiting at. And someone is waiting for us here. Mary? No, you're not. Do I look like your girlfriend? No, my late wife. I can't believe it. You could be her twin. Your face, your voice, just your hair and clothes are different. My name is Maria. I don't look like a uh, ghost, do I? See? Feel how warm I am? You're really not Mary. I told you. I'm Maria. Sorry. I was confused. Where are you going? I'm looking for Mary. Have you seen her? Didn't you say she died? 
Oh, yeah, three years ago. But I got a letter from her. She says she was waiting in our special place. And that's here? Anyway, I haven't seen her. Is this your only special place? Well, there's the hotel, too, I guess. The one on the lake? I wonder if it's still there. The Lakeview Hotel? Yeah, it's still there. So, the hotel was your special place, huh? I'll bet it was. Don't get so mad. I was just joking. Anyway, it's not that way. It's this way. You're coming with me? You were gonna just leave me? No, but... With all these monsters around? No, I just... I'm all alone here. Everyone else is gone. I look like Mary, don't I? You loved her, right? Huh, or maybe... You hated her. Don't be ridiculous. So it's okay? Yeah, fine. Another bizarre conversation. Maria, who looks and sounds like Mary, is almost like seducing James. And it seems like she knows things that she probably shouldn't have. Same thing with a lot of the characters. Not only that, she implies a lot of things. Like, how could she possibly know if James hated his wife? To me, it's strange, and it just builds on the fact that we don't really know what's going on here. I'll wait here. I hate bowling. I didn't come here to play, you know. Hurry back. Okay. So what'd you do? Robbery? Murder? Nah, nothing like that. Huh, you're just a gutless fatso. What'd you have to say that for? I thought you said the cops were out for you. No. I just ran because I was scared. Inside the bowling alley, we find Eddie and Laura having a conversation of why Eddie's even here in the first place. But if you did something bad, why don't you just say you were sorry? Well, I guess I run away a lot too. It's no good. They wouldn't listen. Nobody will ever forgive me. Eddie? Oh, um, you're... James, we met in the apartment building? Yeah, I remember, but... Are you alone here, Eddie? Um, no. Her name? That's what she said. This town is full of monsters. How can you sit there and eat pizza? She said she was fine by herself. She said a fatso like me. And honestly, where the hell does Eddie even find two pizzas? Not only that, he'd even offer us a slice, bro. Did a little girl run out of here? Yeah, she was too fast for me. Maria points behind the building, letting us know that the girl went back there. We find a blind alley, with a locked door and a small gap. She went through there. And there's no way we're gonna fit through that gap. It's no good. But for some reason, Maria's really well equipped for these situations. Pushing us to the side, she uses a set of tools from God knows where she was storing those, and opens the door. What a chill. Catching up to the girl, we see her go inside a hospital building. And if there's one thing I know about scary games and movies, is that you never want to go into the hospital. Regardless, we run straight in. 
We get a map to the building straight off the gate, and we go about doing the thing we do in every building, making sure to check every single door. After checking the first floor, we repeat the process and do it to the second floor. The second floor is crawling with these nurse-like enemies, and they're really weird, they're like so jittery, I just don't like them, they freak me out. Thank god that her foot is an insta-kill, otherwise we'd have to put so many bullets into them. Inside another room, we find a lapis key. Further exploring, we find the changing room. Starting off with the male one, we find a key inside a bloody lab coat. And in the female changing room, we find a cute little teddy bear. Ow! What's wrong? I just pricked myself. Are you okay? Yeah. After the teddy bear scene, we push Maria out of the way, and we find a shotgun inside one of the lockers. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't really like the shotgun that much. It fires really slow compared to the pistol, and the pistol along with the kick is just like extremely powerful as the kick just insta-kills almost anything. We explore a bit more, and the only noteworthy thing we find is a code in the employee lounge, which allows us to access more of the area on the third floor. In the new area we just gained access to, Maria decides to lay down, and she starts coughing. James. <coughs> Wait a minute. <coughs> I'm kinda tired. <laughs> it's just a hangover. You should rest. Mm. <laughs> so comfy. I'm gonna go look for her. For Laura. I'll be back as soon as I can. <clears throat> James, I want to ask you something. What if... What if you can't find Mary? What will you do? I haven't thought about that. Honestly, James, maybe that is something you should think about. Grabbing the key on the table, which lets us gain access to the stairwell. The roof is pitch black, and the only thing really noteworthy on the roof is a journal that we find on the ground. The journal talks about a patient who's been bedridden and can't leave the room. The patient's going to die soon, so the doctor allows him to go home one last time. Just checking what else is on the roof, we get surprised by... Out of nowhere, Pyramid Head knocks us off the roof, leaving us in critical condition. We end up landing in the special treatment room, which then leads us to one of the rooms that you would lock somebody in, if you would consider them clinically insane. In that room, in blood is written the numbers 245, with the first number being unknown. We use the first code that we got, and guessing the first number, we unlock it. Next is another lock. We get this code in the next room where there's a typewriter. 1822. The person who wrote this seems to be crazy too, so whatever's in here is probably not something good. The only thing keeping it shut is one lock, and we find the key in the first floor next to a typewriter, laying on top of a message that reads, The potential for illness exists in all people, and under the right circumstances, any man or woman would be driven like him to the other side. The other side perhaps may not be the best way to phrase it. After all, there is no wall between here and there. It lies on the border of what reality and unreality intersect. It is a place both close and far. And some say it isn't even an illness. I can't agree with them. I am a doctor, not a philosopher or a psychiatrist. But sometimes I have to ask myself this question. It's true that to us, his imaginings are nothing but the invention of a busy mind. But to him, there is simply no other reality. 
Furthermore, he is happy there. So why, I ask myself, why in the name of healing must we drag him painfully into the world of our own reality? And we grab the key and we head back to the box. Unlocking the box, we see what looks like to be strings of hair, which is kind of weird. Why would you keep that? But the hair actually comes in use when we combine it with the bent needle we found on the teddy bear. Combining these two items allows us to reach down into a drain and grab an item. And for some strange reason, James decides to dangle the key right above the hole. Regardless, we move on to the elevator and we go down to the first floor. was already I'm sorry Laura anyway let's go we can talk about this later this is no place for a kid there are all sorts of strange things around here I can't believe you haven't even gotten a scratch on you why should I Wait, wait! There's something I gotta get! Later, okay? But it's really important! What is it? A letter from Mary. Huh? I wanna go get it, is that okay? Yes! Yes! Is it in there? Yeah, in the back. What are you doing, Laura? It's further back, in the desk. Laura! What are you doing? Open the door, Laura. Why should I? I'm a liar, right? Want me to open it? Huh? Huh? Do ya? Laura? Okay. I guess it won't open it. I think I'll just leave you like this. You snotty little brat! Open up! Why, you... you... Laura? You Laura locks us in the room with a strange enemy that's like rooting on the ceiling. If you get too close to it, it strangles you with its feet. In this game, it's more about dodging and weaving. At the end of the fight, we hear a siren, and James looks up at the ceiling. And then, he proceeds to be almost carted outside of the room. We're still in the hospital, but the hospital's more grimy, bloody, and morbid. All of the explored areas of the map have now been reset. The walls are covered in blood, and strange flesh-like material shields the doors. Inside some of the doors are just enemies just waiting there, ready to pounce. Inside the rooms, sheets cover everything. Honestly, my anxiety was very high at this part. 
And I really wanted to stop playing. Inside one of the more important rooms, there's an exposed part of sheeted wall that shows a depiction of multiple hands reaching up towards a basement key. Next to it is a note which speaks of someone locked inside the secret cellar in the basement. Checking the room Maria was in, we find that it's been cleared out and that pill bottles litter the nightstand. All we can really hear is a strange breathing noise. Heading towards the basement, we unlock the door. And inside the basement are a bunch of shelves which have been overturned. And one of them is against a wall. We push the shelf, revealing a secret area in the basement. As soon as we do... James! Mary? Oh, Maria. It's you. I thought you were... Sorry. Anyway, I'm glad you're alive. Anyway? What do you mean, anyway? You don't sound very happy to see me. To be honest, I'm not I'm very fond of Maria. There. Why didn't you try to save me? All you care about is that dead wife of yours. I've never been so scared in my whole life. No, I just... Then stay with me. Don't ever leave me alone. You're supposed to take care of me. For someone who we just met, Maria seems surprisingly close, almost as if she wasn't a complete stranger. Heading down into the secret lair, we find a copper ring laying on the ground. So as we head back up and through the elevator, the radio suddenly goes out. We're greeted by an announcer. answers but one of the viewers who was watching came in really clutch and helped me out so what shout out to you Moose. leaving the elevator we enter a room with a refrigerator laying in the middle of the room but james isn't strong enough to open it by himself yeah maria give me a hand here come on you're supposed to be the big man around here how's a little girl like me supposed to help <laughs> What's this? Not very cute, is it? Here, James. You take it. Mm, thanks. Heading to the Pee Wee Herman room, I mean the guy from the radio, we find a chest where we put in our answers. Inside of the chest is a ton of supplies. We use both of the rings on a door that has 3D model hands in front of it. And then the door opens. This door leads us to the basement, and on our way there we find a very poorly written note. Entering the basement, the camera is not very kind to us. We can barely see anything, so we just have to trek on into the unknown. And not very long after, something starts chasing us. I would say the only good thing about this, Maria is keeping the monster that's chasing us from getting to us. So Maria was really coming in clutch here. She doesn't make it into the elevator, and we watch her die. 
I was really starting to like her too. Damn. James just lets the elevator open against his back. He looks so defeated. But we still need to find Mary, if she really is even here. Leaving the elevator, we find a map and a key. The map tells us of some spots we should check out. So, leaving the building, we re-enter the streets of Silent Hill, and James contemplates what happened, and he's ridden with guilt for not being able to help Maria. Honestly, I'm just proud of him to continue trekking on. To me, even after everything James has been through, he's still willing to continue to find Mary. Arriving at the marked spot on the map, we find a letter in the wrench. At the end of the letter, the writer asks specifically James to pray for forgiveness. Somehow, whoever wrote this knows that James is here. At the location marked on both the map and the letter, we see a statue of a praying woman. And behind her, some recently moved dirt. Grabbing the key, we head towards the last location in Silent Hill, the Historical Society, at the edge of town. Inside, we find a rotting wall, revealing a path that goes down into complete darkness, with no end in sight. I sped up the footage to show how long it really is. Maybe this is a metaphor for James descending into what he has hidden in his mind? And maybe we're truly descending into hell. At the end of the path is a hole, and just like the stairs that descend into darkness, we must jump into this hole in hopes to find the truth. We end up landing at the bottom of a well. With no door in sight, I was stuck here for quite a bit, but a viewer gave me a tip to hit the walls, and eventually... We enter a hallway with one of the doors leading into a weird cloth-like box room. The same room you would keep an insane asylum person in, with a key on the ground. As soon as we pick up the key, our flashlight goes out. So, I go in to replace the batteries and I start hearing a buzzing noise. These bugs just do not stop coming. It's near infinite. They did a lot of damage, and we have to really get out of here quickly. The door which led us here has a keypad next to it, and we have to punch in the correct order. Luckily, the numbers are faded. Using the key we just found in that room, we're able to unlock a gate at our feet, which reveals another hole that we need to jump through. Except, this one's different. As the camera pans, we can clearly see that the room is sideways and James is coming out of the floor. Scanning the room, we find ourselves with a familiar face. Killing a person ain't no big deal. Just put the gun to their head, pow. You, you killed him? But, but, but it wasn't my fault. He, he made me do it. Calm down, Eddie. Tell me what happened. That guy, he, he had it coming. I didn't do anything. He just came after me. Besides, he was making fun of me with his eyes. Like that other one. Just for that, you killed him? What do you mean, just for that? Eddie, you can't just kill someone because of the way they looked at you. Oh yeah? Why not? Till now, I always let people walk all over me. Just like that stupid dog. He had it coming too. Eddie. <laughs> I was just joking, James. He was dead when I got here, honest. Anyway, I gotta run. You're going out there alone? Yeah. Eddie? Eddie has completely lost his marbles. 
And in the same room, funny enough, there's a tablet which reads The Gluttonous Pig. I think this game is trying to hint at something. In one of the cells is a wax doll. Footprints and a voice can be heard saying, Ritual. In another cell are paintings of people at a concert and a giant building on fire. And in the final cell is a tablet of the oppressor. Finally, in the showers is the final tablet, the seductress. We find ourselves in a very big and strange room. In the middle of the room, we can place all three of our tablets. <coughs> Leaving the room, we find a horseshoe hanging on the door which we came from. At this point, I had no idea where to go, so I just went to the only spots left on the map, left unexplored. One of the rooms contains one of the more powerful weapons in the game. And at last we reach the end with a trapdoor that has no handle. So using the wax, lighter, and horseshoe, we craft a makeshift handle. Opening for us a pit, which James just jumps straight in. At the bottom of the hole is a morgue-like place with piles of bodies lining up the walls. Leading to another hole where presumably they drop the dead bodies. At this point, James isn't hesitating anymore just goes for it. I think he's finally accepting that he needs to find Mary in order to figure out these things. To me, these holes represent diving deeper into the psyche of James and revealing the lies he keeps locked away. From the very start, Silent Hill wants James to know that it knows who he is and what he has done. Now all that's left is for us to figure out who James is. At the bottom is an elevator, and entering it, it immediately starts, and there's a ton of supplies on the ground. The elevator leads us to a maze-like area that is crawling with monsters. Further into the maze, we find a face-shaped cubed puzzle that rearranges the room. Rearranging it in the right location allows us to continue into the next room. In the next room is Maria, who we saw die to Pyramid Head, but is waiting for us behind the cage. You're alive! Maria, I thought that thing killed you. Are you hurt bad? Not at all, silly. Maria? That thing, it stabbed you. There was blood everywhere. Stabbed me? What do you mean? It chased us to the elevator, and James, then- James, what are you talking about? Just before, don't you remember? James, honey, did something happen to you? After we got separated in that long hallway? Are you confusing me with someone else? <laughs> you were always so forgetful. Remember that time in the hotel? Maria? You said you took everything. But you forgot that videotape we made. I wonder if it's still there. How do you know about that? Aren't you Maria? I'm not your Mary. So, you're Maria? I am. If you want me to be. All I want from you is an answer. It doesn't matter who I am. I'm here for you, James. See? I'm real. 
Don't you want to touch me? I don't know. Maria isn't human, right? I mean, how can she be when we saw her killed? Not only that, she knows things only Mary would know. I don't completely understand what's going on, but one thing's for certain, Maria might be another version of Mary. After leaving that room, we find another room. This one holding a large blade, similar to the one Pyramid Head uses. Is this supposed to be a hint that James is Pyramid Head? voice. Angela? I believe this monster to be Angela's dad. Being strapped to a bed, it must represent the abuse that Angela received from her own father. When he lands his attacks, he seems to drag it towards his center. Angela, relax. Don't order me around! I'm not trying to order you. So what do you want then? Oh, I see. You're trying to be nice to me, right? I know what you're up to. It's always the same. You're only after one thing. No, that's not true at all. You don't have to lie. Go ahead and say it. Or you could just force me. Beat me up like he always did. Ugh. You only care about yourself anyway. You disgusting pig. You said your wife Mary was dead, right? Yes. She was ill. Liar! I know about you. You didn't want her around anymore. You probably found someone else. <sighs> That's ridiculous. I never... There's definitely a lot of things to unpack here, but the game drops us off in a puzzle, so we don't really have that much time to think about it. And I would say this is one of the more harder puzzles in the game. Using a poem about six different people, we have to find the one who's wrongly accused. Dead men, dead men, swinging in the tree. How many dead men do you see? Tongue turned blue and face gone gray. Watch them as they twist and sway. The first one killed the butcher's man and cooked him in the frying pan. Served him to his hungry guest and gave them seconds on request. The next one with his smile and sweets stole poor children off the streets. To men who dressed in savory, he sold them into slavery. Breaking into homes at night, the thief he had a nasty fright. Built his foolish head with ale, woke up in the morn in a county jail. The artist with his dawning skill, tried his hand at painting bills. But caught in the rain he was undone, when the ink he'd used did start to run. With promises of great return, taking gold he did not earn. Bundled up out of sight, quietly slipped off in the night. Three houses to ashes burned. The sheriff with no place to turn, did spy a stranger to his town, locked him up and beat him down. After much trial and error, I figured that the arson was falsely accused. Now where the arson's body was, only remained his mask and a key. Using a key on some handcuffs, we're able to raise a bar to gate.
Once again, Maria is dead, somehow managing to escape the barred room, lying down on a bed, soaked in blood. The next room is strange. We find a graveyard inside the building. And next to one of the tombs, we find a hole. Eddie? What are you doing? What does it look like? He always busted my balls. You fat, disgusting piece of shit. You make me sick. Fat ass, you're nothing but a waste of skin. You're so ugly, even your mama don't love you. Well, maybe he was right. Maybe I am nothing but a fat, disgusting piece of shit. But you know what? It doesn't matter if you're smart, dumb, ugly, pretty. It's all the same once you're dead. And the corpse can't laugh. From now on, if anyone makes fun of me, I'll kill him. Just like that. Eddie, have you gone nuts? I knew it. You too. You're just like him, James. Hey, I didn't mean anything. Don't bother. I understand. You've been laughing at me all along, haven't you? Ever since we first met. I'll kill you, James! Here we see Eddie's true character. Bullied and abused, he twisted his mind into thinking he was in the right for his murderous actions. Yeah, I killed that dog. It was fun. It tried to chew its own guts up. Finally died all curled up in a ball. Then he came after me. I shot him too, right in the leg. He cried more than the dog. <laughs> gonna have a hard time playing football on what's left of that knee. You think it's okay to kill people? You need help, Eddie. Don't get a holy on me, James. This town called you too. You and me are the same. We're not like other people. Don't you know that? Let's party! Eddie straight up chases us, trying to beat us down with his own fist. Even though he has his own gun, he still wants to use his fist. So, we just put a couple rifle rounds into him, stun locking him essentially, and he can't really do much. Well, I mean, except shoot back whenever he wants to. Eddie? Eddie? I... I killed a... a human being. Mary, did you really die three years ago? So, we leave Tubby back in the room, we find ourselves at a dock, and at the end of the dock is a canoe waiting for us. Now, I played this on PC, and I know that if you play this on controller, the controls are a little bit different. On PC, all I had to do was just hold the up control in order to move. But on controller, you have to like rotate both the joysticks in a circle and honestly that sounds like a lot of work. So I'm glad I did this on PC. Regardless, we made it to the end and we find ourselves at the manor. James says, hmm, looks like nothing changed. Well honestly James, how are you going to tell if nothing changed if it's so foggy? In front of the manor, we find the Little Mermaid music box. 
I don't know how this game got the license for Little Mermaid, but that's kind of freaking cool, I'm not gonna lie. Inside the manor, we take a right, and we see a map. This map is a layout of the whole entire building, along with a note that says, I'm waiting for you. Looking around the manor in the main room, we find the music box with three indents in it. I'm guessing that we have to collect three music boxes and play it on this machine so that it plays the right sound or something. All I know is that when we put in the Little Mermaid all by itself, it didn't sound right. Right next to the music box is a reception area and we get the key to room 312. This is the room that Mary is supposedly waiting for us at. So in traditional fashion, I check every single room in the building and in one of the rooms, there's a suitcase. It's locked though, so we're gonna have to come back here later. Also, I check the dining room. On a plate, there's a fish key. And also in the same room, Did I scare you? Yeah, you did. You're here to find Mary, aren't you, James? Well, have you? No. Is that why you're here, too? She's here, isn't she? If you know where she is, tell me. But she said it in her letter. What letter? read it but don't tell Rachel okay who's Rachel she was our nurse I took it from her locker Laura, how old are you? Um, I turned eight last week. So, Mary couldn't have died three years ago. Could, could she really be here? Is this the quiet, beautiful place she was talking about? Me and Mary talked a lot about Silent Hill. She even showed me all her pictures. She really wanted to come back. That's why I'm here. Maybe you'll get it if you see the other letter. The one, Mary. Huh? I'm Honestly, I have no idea if this girl's telling the truth or not. She's already lied and locked us in a room once. So I'm not really too fond of chasing after her. Regardless, even as soon as we leave the room, two huge monsters are waiting for us. Monsters we already confronted before. I like to call them the daddies. Giving them a quick little kick, we insta-kill them. And looking through the rest of the building, you'll notice that now, there's a bunch of monsters everywhere. <laughs> In one of the elevators, we find a can of thinner. I don't really know what thinner is, but I mean, I'm pretty sure we're going to use it later. Using the fish key on the briefcase that we saw earlier, there's a key inside. The room is relatively close, so we head over there, and guess what? More daddies. So, after taking care of the daddies, we enter the room, and another key, one to the employee area. And also, there's a suitcase on the floor, except it needs a combination to open it. Luckily on the bed, there's a bunch of photos, and one of those photos shows a solution. So that's where we use the thinner. We put in the code MAMA, and it opens up. And we get a music box, Cinderella. So using the key to get into the employee area, we have access to a small room with an elevator. Now this elevator only works if you have no items on you. And honestly, there's no real way to get rid of items, but the game decides to put a shelf where we can put every single one of our items on the shelf. And yes, I tested if you can take some items with you. No, you cannot. 
You have to put every single one of your items on the shelf in order to heal. The only thing now is we have no weapon and no heals. So here we are in the bottom floor. We get a new map. And as part of the tradition, we have to check every single room. One of the rooms, we find the final music box. So at this point, I'm like, all right, great. Let's just get out of here. Well, too bad. Elevator doesn't want to go up anymore. We check another one of the rooms and inside the safe is a videotape. Under it is a can opener. No idea why that's there, but I'm pretty sure this videotape is the one that Mary was talking about. So it must be really, really important. So going further into the building, we head more deeper down. And guess what? We'll fight some more monsters. Except the only thing is no weapon. So we just gotta run past everything. Hope it doesn't hit us. One of the rooms is really, really loud. It's the boiler room and we get a key in there. And in order to get to the room where the key unlocks, we have to run through the monsters. So that's what we do. Checking every door in the process. And thank God in the room is a bunch of health. It's also a can. So now we use a can opener and guess what's inside? Yep, you're right. Light bulbs. <laughs> I don't know why there's light bulbs in here, but yeah, we grab one of the light bulbs and we head off into the bar. And the bar is normal enough, you know, it looks kind of nice, actually. It's something like from Persona. There's a jukebox and there's a lamp. So we put the light bulb in the lamp and oh, guess what? Now we can see. So now using that newfound sight, we open the door. We open the door and we're allowed back into the main hotel. Making our way back to the shelf where all our items are, we have to pass a couple monsters, but it's no biggie. Our guns are going to make everything a lot better. There's no way I'm going to go through this game with no weapons. As soon as we leave the room, there's no more monsters, so I don't really know what's going on there. And now that we got three of the music boxes, we're going to use all three of them on this big machine in the middle. Hotel stairway key. This now allows us to go to the third floor. And opening the gate to the third floor, we check one of the first doors on our right, and it's 312. Inside the room is a VHS and a TV. We're putting in the tape we got, we see this. Are you taping again? Come on. Uh, I don't know why, but I just love it here. It's so peaceful. You know what I heard? This whole area used to be a sacred place. I think I can see why. Uh, it's too bad we have to leave. Please promise you'll take me again, James. <laughs> And finally, the truth that's been hidden at has been revealed. James killed his own wife. So Silent Hill brought him back here so he can face the reality of his past. So there you are, James. Did you get the letter? Did you find Mary? If not, let's get going already. Okay. James has accepted reality, finally coming to terms with the death of his wife, taken by his own hands. Mary's gone. She's dead. Liar, that's a lie! No, that's not true. She... she died because she was sick? No, I 
killed her. At this point, I wasn't sure if Shirley was real or not. But to be able to tell a young girl that you killed her best friend, James must have really given up. You kill her! Why'd you do it? I hate you! I want her back! Give her back to me! I knew it! You didn't care about her! I hate you, James! I hate you! I hate you! I hate you! She was always waiting for you. Why? Why? is now dripping with water, almost as if the whole building is crying. The doors are now transporting us to new locations which don't really make any sense, but luckily the camera kind of hints at where we need to go next, and as we progress through these doors, the building slowly gets more grittier. Or maybe this was how the building originally was, and James is just seeing the reality of it. Going through the new maze-like building, we find ourselves at the elevator, and we take our way to the basement. As soon as we hit the basement, it starts flooding. And the game doesn't really stop, it throws monsters at us. Monsters that we can't even see because they're in the water. All the areas we visited earlier is now filled with water above the knee. We open the door to the stairwell, but this time we meet Angela and the room is entirely different. Not only that, everything's on fire. And she's staring at this weird corpse thing against the wall. For saving me but I wish you hadn't even mama said it I deserved what happened no Angela that's wrong no don't pity me I'm not worth it James, give me back that knife. No, I, I won't. Saving it for yourself? Me? N no, I never kill myself. It's hot as hell in here. You see it too. For me, it's always like this. We leave the burning room and find ourselves in a very Resident Evil style room. Fixed camera angles, really, really spooky, banging noise in the background. 
next room is no less strange. It's a save room, but there's nine red squares against the wall. Was weak. That's why I needed you. I needed someone to punish me for my sins. But that's all over now. I know the truth. Now it's time to end this. And just like that, Jay's complete balance. We have to fight two of these pyramid heads. But the fight is actually kind of easy. All you really gotta do is just run to the corner of the room and spam your rifle. And after you fire enough rifle rounds into them, they slowly walk into the middle and, uh, as you'll see... In their hands are eggs. The first egg being the scarlet egg, the next one being the rust-covered egg. We have to use these eggs on the door in order to unlock it. And as soon as we open the door, there's a freaking face on the door. I don't know what this face is meant to represent or why it's there, but it kind of freaked me out. Proceeding further, we start having a conversation with Mary. Mary? What do you want, James? I, uh, I brought you- The only thing is, I accidentally opened up my inventory, and it kind of canceled the whole conversation. So... On the other side, it's raining and we're in this weird, rusted staircase. Honestly, this was made to give anxiety. Dude, look how fragile this thing looks. Honestly, as soon as we get to the top, it literally collapses. But, there's Mary. Finally found her. James, I've been waiting. Mary, I'm sorry it took so long. Didn't you want to see me? Yes, I wanted to see you. Even an illusion of you. That's why I came here. It's not true, is it? You killed me. I couldn't watch you suffer. Don't make excuses, James. <laughs> I know I was a burden on you. You must have hated me. That's why you got rid of me. It's true. I may have had some of those feelings. It was a long three years. I was tired. That's why you needed this Maria person? James, do you really think I could ever forgive you for what you did? Mary, clearly not fond about her acquaintanceship with Maria, suddenly goes berserk. And then she turns into like this nun demon that's hanging upside down in a bed with claw for feet. I honestly did not even want to get close to her to find out how much damage she does or anything. So I just ran to the corner of the room. And honestly, this boss fight wasn't really even that hard. All you need to do is just keep running, keep a distance and just start blasting. 
That's all I did. Put a couple shots, run to the corner of the room, put a couple shots. Finally, after putting the last couple rounds, she collapses. Well, finally, after putting the last couple rounds, boom. And with that, we're back at what James thought was a special place. Except, we're not alone. You killed Mary again? That wasn't Mary. Mary's gone. That was just something I... Maria? Maria? What, James? I want you. I want you with me. Are you sure? Come on. Let's get out of here. What about Mary? It's okay. I have you. In my restless dreams, I see that town. Silent Hill. You promised you'd take me there again someday, but you never did. Well, I'm alone there now, in our special place, waiting for you. Waiting for you to come to see me. But you never do. And so I wait, wrapped in my cocoon of pain and loneliness. I know I've done a terrible thing to you. Something you'll never forgive me for. I wish I could change that. But I can't. I feel so pathetic and ugly laying here, waiting for you. Every day I stare up at the cracks in the ceiling, and all I can think about is how unfair it all is. The doctor came today. He told me I could go home for a short stay. It's not that I'm getting better. It's just that this may be my last chance. I think you know what I mean. Even so, I'm glad to be coming home. I've missed you terribly. But I'm afraid, James. I'm afraid you don't really want me to come home. Whenever you come see me, I can tell how hard it is on you. I don't know if you hate me or pity me, or maybe I just disgust you. I'm sorry about that. When I first learned that I was going to die, I just didn't want to accept it. I was so angry all the time, and I struck out at everyone I loved most, especially you, James. That's why I understand if you do hate me. I want you to know this, James. I'll always love you. Even though our life together 
had to end like this. I still wouldn't trade it for the world. We had some wonderful years together. <sighs> well, this letter has gone on too long, so I'll say goodbye. I told the nurse to give this to you after I'm gone. That means that as you read this, I'm already dead. I can't tell you to remember me. But I can't bear for you to forget me. These last few years since I became ill, I am so sorry for what I did to you, did to us. You've given me so much, and I haven't been able to return a single thing. That's why I want you to live for yourself now. Do what's best for you, James. James, you made me happy. something about that cough and with that the game ends i really hope you liked this video i had a ton of fun playing this for the first time it was really really scary there were a lot of times where i just wanted to like completely stop playing but i'm glad i pushed through it i originally streamed this on twitch so if you're interested about that i'll put my twitch in the description I plan on playing Silent Hill 3 and maybe other spooky scary games, I'm not entirely sure. I also want to give a huge shout out to the team who made the Enhanced Edition. It was really, really good. It was a great experience and if they didn't mod this game, probably wouldn't even have touched it. Because honestly, it's a super old game, so I'm glad that they made it compatible with newer systems and they just generally improved it. Also, if you're a huge fan of Silent Hill 2, just let me know what you thought in the comments, even about the lure or anything, anything that I got wrong or what your thoughts. Dude, I'm super interested. I actually really like this game a lot, and I kind of want to know more about the lure. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this super, super, super long video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and maybe I'll catch you later. Peace. One other thing, if you're not subscribed, feel free to subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers so I can start getting monetized. Anyways, thank you so much. See you.